Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for this online service of worship. A very warm welcome to you from St Anne's Church. And for those people who may not know me, my name is Steve Morgan and I am an Assistant Minister at St Anne's Church. Today is the third Sunday in the month when we hold our community worship service in which we focus on issues and ministry in the life of our community. And this month, following the continuing issue of COVID-19 and the recent rising cases, the focus of our service will include prayers for our community and the churches in our benefice, together with some thoughts about how we as Christians can think, pray and act in response to the difficult times that we're experiencing. And there'll be a particular mention of the place of welcome, which is also now known as the space of welcome, which currently meets outside in the Burnt Would Be a Friend Marquee in the garden grounds at St Anne's Church every Thursday morning. However, as we begin our service today, wherever we are watching and listening online, let us remember that even though we are apart, Wherever we are, God is with us. So let's, let us just pause for a moment of silence and then I will pray for us. God of heaven and earth, in these difficult times in which we may be isolated, living apart from loved ones or distance from our friends and neighbours, thank you that there is nothing in all of creation, not even coronavirus, that is able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We ask and pray that your love that never fails will continue to be shared through our words and our actions in our churches and in our community. And as we recognise our needs and the needs of others, we come before you now in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving to you. Amen. And so our first song this morning, uh, which will be played by Jean and sung by the singers from St Anne's Choir, is I the Lord of Sea and Sky. The words will appear for you on the screen, but if you have the Mission Praise Hymn Book, the number is 857, 857, I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
Thank you to Jean and our singers. We now come to a time in our service where we're going to say sorry to God. And this will be led this morning by Stella. And now we come to a time for forgiveness and confession where we say sorry to God for things perhaps we've done in the past week that we regret or even things that we haven't done. Let us think about our life this week, about our common humanity and our world and let us keep a short time of silence as we reflect upon that week. And now we come to our confession. And when I say together, we say, Lord, hear us and help us. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, hear us as we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. Together, Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. And together we say to you, Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Together we pray, Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. And together we pray, Lord, hear us and help us. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and the Holy Spirit enable us to grow in love. Amen. Thank you very much, Stella. We now sing our second song, which is a response of praise, thanking God that we are forgiven. And this song is Be Thou My Vision. And once again, the words will appear on the screen. But if you have the hymn book Mission Praise, it's number 51. And again, this will be played for us by Jean, who will be accompanied by the singers from St Anne's Choir.
thank you to Jean and our singers. We now come to our Bible reading for today, which is Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 to 22, which will be read for us this morning by Faith and Teresa Woolley. The Bible reading today is taken from Matthew 22, verses 15 to 22 paying the imperial tax to Caesar. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his word. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought the denarius. Show and he asked them, Whose image is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When I heard this, I were amazed. So they left him and went away. This, this is, is the, the word of the Lord. Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for reading our Bible reading this morning, Faith and Teresa. It's now my great pleasure to welcome our speaker this morning, um, the Reverend David Newsom, who will now speak on Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. Thank you, David. Hello. Jesus was born into and lived in a country that was in crisis. The country was under occupation by a foreign army, the Romans. With all the tension, bitterness, fear and potential violence that goes with rule by an invading army. And as always, the population ruled in this way cope with the situation in different ways. Some just put their head down and get on with their lives. After all, there is an old saying those who bow the lowest miss the sword. Others seek to exploit the situation and work for the invader, making a profit at their neighbour's expense. Then there are others who will have none of it and seek to resist. These are prepared to take up arms and fight the invader by any means. And in the pages of the Gospels, we see all these different responses lived out. We have the stories of those who simply get on with their lives, fishing, tending their sheep and so on. We see those like Zacchaeus, who collaborate with the Romans, collecting their taxes and creaming off a bit for themselves at the same time. And then we have hints of others too, hints through their names, like Judas Iscariot, for example, a name that could be connected with the Latin word Sicarius, meaning a dagger bearer, a knife man. The Sicarii were Jewish nationalists who believed in the violent overthrow of their Roman masters. It's possible that Judas could have been one of their number. So today's story from St Matthew's Gospel is highly charged. The stakes are high. The chief priests and the Pharisees are trying to catch Jesus out. The question of paying taxes is a highly loaded one. They begin first with flattery no doubt to try and lull him into a false sense of security. Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. 
Then comes the question. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Now, if Jesus was to answer that it was lawful to pay taxes, he would immediately alienate those of his followers who wanted to overthrow the Romans and were opposed to paying taxes. But if he tries to please that group and announce that people should withhold their taxes from the Romans and their illegal occupation, he would be arrested for insurrection, for inciting rebellion against the Romans, and would probably scare off those of his followers who don't want any trouble, those who've come to Jesus seeking consolation and healing. It's a cunning question. You can almost sense their smirk as they ask it, and a barely stifled got him. But Jesus is more than a match for them. His reply skillfully sidesteps their traps. So he gets them to show him a coin and asks whose image is on it. And when they reply, the emperor's, he responds, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. Game, set and match. He's dodged their traps. And they left him and went away, the Gospel tells us. Now Christians have tended to think about Jesus' response in much the same way as the chief priests and Pharisees did. The focus has tended to be on the first part of what Jesus said. Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's. And so Christians have discussed and speculated over hundreds of years of church history, what duty do we owe the government? But like Jesus' opponents, we miss the second part of his response, to give to God the things that are God's. But what does that mean? Uh, and what, if anything, does this encounter have to say to us today? Jesus is bringing the question back to God. This incident in St Matthew's Gospel follows on, as we've heard over these last weeks, from a whole series of parables that Jesus told that challenge the audience, have they recognised who Jesus is? Have they seen God at work? And have they responded to God? In this time of crisis, Jesus is bringing them back to God and to give to God the things that are God's. This particular audience of religious leaders should no, need no reminder of what that means. But elsewhere, Jesus helps us understand what it means to give to God his due. When he responds to the question, what's the greatest commandment? His answer, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. So in a time of crisis, what does he do? He calls us back to God, to give to God our love and obedience, placing our faith and trust in God in response to God's great love for us and to serve one another, loving our neighbour as we would love ourselves. So to give to God is a call to generous living, giving love to God, giving love and service to others in response to what we ourselves have received from God. Again and again in the spiritual life, we find that when we're prepared to risk being generous and our offering is truly open-ended, then we receive so much more in return. 
But for as Jesus himself puts it, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Somebody once expressed powerfully what it means to give our all to God and to place our trust in God, crisis or not, when they said this. All we want in Christ, we shall find in Christ. If we want little, we shall find little. If we want much, we shall find much. But if in utter helplessness we cast our all on Christ, he will be to us the whole treasury of God. A word perhaps for our own crisis. Amen. Thank you, David. We now come to our collect prayer for today, which is read for us by Chris Hawthorne. Faithful Lord, whose love never ceases and whose mercies never come to an end, grant us grace to trust you and to receive the gifts of your love, which are new every morning. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Chris. We're now going to uh, say words which uh, confirm what we believe as Christians, and this will be led for us today by Carol Thomas. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Thank you, Carol. We now come to our third song in our service, Faithful One, So Unchanging, which again is in Mission Praise 825 if you have a hymn book to hand. And again, this will be led by Jean and uh, accompanied by the singers from our choir at St Anne's.
thank you Jean and our singers now we come to the time where we're going to pray some prayers of intercession together and these the prayers this morning will be led by David and Pauline Brook O oh Lord open our eyes to your presence our minds to your grace our lips to your praise and our hearts to your love shall we pray Caring God, we pray for all who at this time are suffering from physical, emotional and mental illness. May they know that you are beside them, giving them courage to face their struggles. Bring healing and comfort to all here and around the world suffering from COVID-19. Speed their recovery and slow and slow the spread of the virus. We thank you for all the efforts of those treating, testing and caring for patients. And we ask that you will protect them as they go about their work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our community and give thanks for Richard Steve and the volunteers from St Anne's and other churches within the Benefice who, together with friends, are responding to many individual and varied needs. We pray for Burnt Would Be a Friend and those who donate food to this and to other food banks in this area and beyond. Many of us would like to give more practical help but are unable to. But we give our support through ongoing prayer. Lord, hear us as we bring our community's needs to you. As we give thanks for food that we are able to distribute to families in our community, may we be mindful that across the world many will not eat today. We pray that nations will strive to eliminate starvation and those who have plenty will find ways to respond to those who are hungry. May we not be greedy or wasteful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We remember those who are ill at this time especially those suffering with COVID-19, both in our own country and across the world. We bring before you all those mentioned on our weekly news sheet. And our prayers are also asked for Tony Slater, recovering after an operation, Joy Bagley, awaiting scan results, David Buckley, waiting for test results, and Janice and Brian Smith, who are self-isolating. In a moment of quiet, we will remember all those known to us and on our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all who've recently died and pray for those who mourn. May they know your love and comfort and sense your presence with them every day. We pray especially for the family and friends of Brian Fitter, Isabel Wall, Sarah Ewer, Henry Green, Mary Derry and Jean Tideswell. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for ourselves. As we look to the week ahead, we ask that in all we do, we may walk more closely with you at our side, knowing that your love is with us every step of the way. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We now say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Please use the form that is most comfortable for you. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for preparing our prayers for us this morning, David and Pauline. And now, as I said at the beginning of our service, we're going to hear a little bit uh, about the Ministry of the Place of Welcome, uh, lately known as the Space of Welcome, um, which is a, an important ministry that's been carried on by uh, St Anne's Church and meets outside in the church grounds uh, in the Burntwood Be a Friend Marquee. And our message this morning is from our church warden, Sheila Murphy, who is greatly involved in organising and hosting this ministry. St Anne's Place of Welcome has been open for just over three years. However, since the Corona-19 virus, it has become the Space of Welcome, whereby we meet outside church on the front lawn in the Burnt Would Be a Friend marquee. We meet on a Thursday morning from 11am to 1pm and our helpers serve tea or coffee and individually wrapped biscuits or small cakes. We set up seats around the tables, all suitably sanitised in the marquee and follow the rules of social distancing. Also, all helpers wear face masks. It is lovely to be able to meet with our friends, old and new, and we have also had visits from children and a few dogs. So if you have some free time on a Thursday morning. Do drop in and enjoy a chat and a cuppa. We would love to welcome you to St Anne's Space of Welcome. In this way, the Ministry Space of Welcome or Space of Welcome adds support and contact to people during the COVID-19 pandemic. It has been a privilege to serve our community in this ministry and the PCC have recently agreed to the place of welcome to move back into church in the beginning of November. We are arranging for social distancing and screens between the tables etc. We will advise you when this is fully arranged. Thank you for that message Sheila and thank you for all you do um, in the Ministry of the Space of Welcome. And now we come to the time in our service where we're going to hear and share God's peace together. And uh, this morning this will be led for us by Harry and Maisie Brown. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever's on your mind, may God's peace be with you. Thank you, Harry and Maisie, for sharing the peace with us today. And now we come to the time in our service where we're going to celebrate the children's work uh, that uh, children have carried out um, during our service. So now we're going to see some pictures of uh, the colouring in that the children have done and also some of the puzzles that have been completed.
Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, we know you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You are explained by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus knew their evil intent. If he said no, the Herodians would report him to the Roman governor, and he would be executed for treason. If he said yes, the Pharisees would denounce him to the people as disloyal to his nation. So Jesus said to them, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's. They replied. Then he said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. They were unable to trap him in what he had said there in public. And, astonished by his answer, they became silent and went away. Thank you to the children who've uh, forwarded the pictures and completed puzzles uh, based on the service reading today from Matthew's Gospel. And now we come to our final song, which is titled One More Step. And uh, it's Mission Praise number 1346, 1346. And again, Jean will play this for us, accompanied by these singers from St Anne's Choir. Thank you, Jean, and the singers from St Anne's Choir. And now, to give us our notices and to uh, say a final blessing for us, and also to announce details of the Zoom chat that's available at the end of this uh, online service, I'll now hand you over to our team vicar, the Reverend Richard Westwood. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the service. Over to you, Richard. So we are now come to some notices. The first of which is to say a big thank you to everyone who's taken part in our gathered and glued worship service this morning. Thank you for all that you've done in playing your part in offering our worship this morning. And a particular thank you to David Buckley, who's uh, glued all the different pieces together and made it one whole. Thank you. Thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, the second point is also a point of thanks, uh, which is to say thank you very much indeed to everyone who's uh, donated and given generously to St Anne's Thank Offering Day, uh, which was, was focusing throughout the month of October, but particularly around our, our harvest services last Sunday. And so far we've received £3,839 in gifts from people associated with that gift day. Some of those gifts are gift aided, uh, which will mean that the total's going over £4,000, which is just truly wonderful. 
And I want to say a big thank you to everyone who's given so generously. We are really, really grateful for that. Uh, the, the proceeds from that gift day will go towards the parish share, which St Anne's pays uh, each year to Litchfield Diocese. And that helps to provide for the, the ministry and mission of St Anne's and helps our work to continue. So thank you to every one of you who's given. Uh, it's not too late to give if you'd like to. There are some details uh, on the church website and also there are envelopes at the back of church if that's something you'd like to do. But the main point is thank you. Thirdly, I've been asked to pass on some uh, requests for prayer, please. Um, uh, you may be aware that Tony Slater uh, was in hospital last weekend uh, and had surgery. He's back at home now and is recovering well, but I know he'd be glad of your prayers as he recovers. And also Angela, who's taking care of him while he convalesces, would be glad of your prayers too. Please also continue to pray for Joy Bagley and David Buckley as they await uh, for results from various scans and tests that they've been having. Also, I've been asked to, to pass, on, uh, pass on to you a request to pray for Janet and Brian Smith. Uh, they're both self-isolating after a close member of their family tested positive for COVID. Uh, when I spoke to Janet, she didn't have, neither she or Brian have uh, any symptoms for COVID, which is really good news. But obviously, they're, uh, they're kind of locked away now for um, a further week. And I know they'll be glad of your prayers uh, as that happens. That's Janet and Brian Smith. Uh, coming up this week, uh, we have this evening uh, evening worship at six o'clock uh, in St Anne's and on Thursday at 11 o'clock, our place of welcome in the Burnt would be a friend tent. A reminder that uh, if you come to the place of welcome, you are very welcome indeed. Uh, we're ab abiding by the government's rule of six and that means that if you come to that, please, wherever you sit and start is where you need to stay. That prevents the mingling and a potential passing on of the virus. And uh, all the people who are, are helping and serving tea and coffee, they'll bring drinks to you and they'll be wearing masks as that happens. Uh, and uh, you're very welcome to come, please do. Uh, and that will be between 11 and 1 this coming Thursday. Next Sunday morning, our service is in church, Holy Communion in St Anne's at 10.15. And in order to make sure that we have the right number of people coming to that please if you intended to come do please uh, ring the, the parish office or send an email to let us know that you're coming and we'll make sure that we're not exceeding the maximum numbers uh, that can come to St Anne's for that sort of service. Uh, we should be able to accommodate everybody who wants to come we can we think fairly confidently seat uh, 45 people with two meters of social distancing between all of them and uh, Hopefully that will mean that everyone who wants to come is able to come. But it just makes sure that um, we can be doubly sure about the arrangements for that. That's next Sunday morning, 10.15, for Holy Communion in church. And that will be followed by a six o'clock evening worship as well next Sunday. Um, just to mention also that our private prayer arrangements. Uh, in recent months, uh, we've had the church open for private prayer on Monday, Wednesday and Friday uh, between 12 and 1. And uh, I think as our church services have uh, become uh, more well attended, uh, the need for those private prayer sessions seems to have reduced because uh, less and less people are coming to them. Um, so they're just going to be continuing now on Mondays and Wednesdays, 12 to 1, no need to book, and the church is available for private prayer at those times. But our Friday 12 to 1 session is no longer taking place. The church won't be open uh, but please do come at the other times. And of course, if you're coming to the, the place of welcome, the church will be open at that time too. And there's nothing at all uh, as, as, as a problem to come in and use the church for private prayer, uh, either before or around that time as well. And we do have our Holy Communion service at 9.30 on a Thursday morning as well. Once again, please book if you're coming to that with a phone call to the parish office. Also in the Burnt Would Be A Friend tent is the Burnt Would Be A Friend Monday food table. And that's where surplus food from local supermarkets is passed on and made available to anyone in our community who has need of some fresh food. We never know what's going to come, but please, if you know people or if you yourselves uh, are in need of some fresh food, please do come along uh, Mondays 10 till, uh, till 12 uh, on a Monday morning. Uh, and that's where the, the St Anne's Fresh Food Table uh, is available for, 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 for free. Uh, for anyone who wants it uh, there's other food available uh, throughout the week at similar times at spark uh, and please and also of course at the food bank too so please there's no reason at all for anyone in burntwood to go hungry there is food available we're really grateful for the funding that we've received to make sure that people have the food they need so if you know people who are facing real hardship where 
buying essentials of food is a real difficulty please please let me know and we'll make sure that we our food team will be able to get some food to them and help them if we can I think that's pretty much all of our notices for today other than to say please if you're able to do uh, stay on um, and join in the zoom coffee and chat at 11.45 the invitation for that is on uh, St Anne's website if you go to the main page click on the the green central bar in the middle of the opening page that takes you to a section called St Anne's during coronavirus and near the bottom of the text there there's an invitation to click and it will take you to the zoom uh, video facility where you'll be able to join with lots of other people at 11.45 uh, to share some thoughts and a cup of coffee uh, and or water of course uh, and uh, just catch up with one another and have some fellowship too it's quite likely that myself and steve uh, morgan won't be around for that this week um because we're both taking services either at hammerwich or at Christchurch. Uh, so our apologies for not able to being able to be there uh, we might be able to make it but you never know but if we're not there that's where we are and uh, we'll, we'll miss seeing you but i hope you have a good time gathering together as well i think those are all our notices if you've had a birthday this week then a very happy birthday we'll sing to you uh, in person uh, hopefully very soon in the in the coming weeks or months but now a closing prayer of blessing may the peace of the lord christ go with you wherever he may send you may he guide you through the wilderness protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. And may he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and with those for whom you care, now and always. Amen. Have a good week and hope to see you really soon. God bless. Dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to move in the power of your spirit. Teach me to walk in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust.